In this video I'm going to show you a couple different ways you can easily connect an LED strip to a controller without having to solder. For the first method I'm going to be using some BTF lighting 3 pin connector pieces that I ordered off Amazon. Before attaching this to the LED strip I'm going to be using a cutter to expose a little bit more of the wire. Now go ahead and attach this to the LED strips, but make sure that the arrows on that LED strip are pointing in the opposite direction. And since the LED strip and my background are both white, I put it on this black piece of paper so hopefully you can see a little bit easier. Next I'm going to be taking some breadboard jumper wires, and since I only need the female end, I'm going to be cutting these in half. Next, take a cutter and strip back some of the wire on all three pieces. From here you can twist the wires together and make sure to wrap some electrical wire around the exposed ends. So in this setup, the red wire is the one that's attached to my voltage on the LED strip. I just need to make sure that I'm plugging that breadboard jumper wire into the VIN pin on the ESP8266 board. Next you're going to take the green wire which is our data and that's going to be plugged into the D4 pin. The last one is going to be our white ground wire and this is going to be plugged into the GND pin which is right next to the voltage. Now before we can plug it in to see if it works you do need to make sure you have WLED installed on this Wi-Fi board and I'm not going to go over that in this video but I will leave a link to my previous video that I made that walks you through step-by-step -step instructions. For powering this small amount of LED lights, I'm just going to be using a micro USB cord and a wall plug. And if you don't have a wall plug, most USB ports on computers will be enough to power these lights as well. As you can see, the lights are all turned on, so now you can download the WLED app and start playing around with different animations. Let's move on to the second method. So you're going to start out with the same bare LED strip from before. I found these LED connector terminals off Amazon, and this is what I'm going to be using for this technique. So take that plastic piece and the LED strip is going to be inserted on the smaller of the two ends on that plastic terminal. And you might want to use a pliers for this step, otherwise you just press down really hard until that plastic piece snaps in place. One thing to note is that most of these LED strips come with that sticky pad on the back side. For that small section that goes into the connector piece, make sure you remove that before doing this. Next you're going to grab one of these female connectors and if there's any exposed wires at the end make sure you cut those off before inserting into the terminal. This plastic terminal has three channels that the wires can slide into and then again you might want to use a pliers but you have to press down extremely hard to get it to snap in place. From here there's a couple different routes we can go. On Amazon there's a lot of different controllers that you can buy that look similar to this. 
And all we have to do at this point is plug in the LED strip that we just made into the male end of the connector coming out of the controller. Now to power the LED lights from this option, if you don't have a DC 5 volt adapter laying around at home, you can certainly go buy one on Amazon for pretty cheap. Now these controllers will generally have an app that you can download so you can begin using your lights. So for the other iteration of this option, let's say you wanted to plug this into your ESP8266 board and use WLED. All you have to do is find three jumper wires and make sure that one end is female and one end is male. Then just like we did in the first step, make sure that the voltage wire is going into the VIN pin, make sure the data wire is going into the D4 pin, and make sure the ground wire is going into the GND pin. Now one thing that you could try doing to avoid that middle section is cutting the male end off of these jumper wires and plugging that directly into the connector terminals, but I assume the jumper wires might have been a little bit too thin to make a solid connection, so I avoided doing it that way. The last thing is you can just quickly plug it in with that same micro USB cord plugged into the wall adapter or your USB on the computer and make sure the lights turn on. So that's it for this tutorial. In future videos I do plan on going over how to connect and power long runs of LED strip lights, how to solder LED strips together as well as to controllers, different power options for 5 volt LED strips, and lastly how to power, control, and reuse 12 volt LED strips such as the Govi lights.